Thank you very much. So you may think that this, uh, this title is a bit silly, but if you give me a few minutes to and bear with me, I hope to show you that all sites have sim very similar problem to other long-lived cells and have found very interesting um, solutions to cope to common problems. So I'm gonna put my, my pre-pointer option to laser. Okay. So oocytes are the female germ cells and in mammals are fixed in number at the time of birth. And they are used throughout the entire fertile life of an individual. So oocytes are very long lived cells, which at fertilization need to give rise to uh, a newly formed embryo. And they do so by passing their entire cytoplasmic content to uh, the embryo at fertilization. Now, this is a very interesting feature because if you think other long-lived cells, for example, neuron, are very susceptible to uh, a decay in the quality of their cytoplasmic content, especially uh, they are susceptible to aggregation of proteins, which ultimately leads to, the, to their degeneration. And for oocyte, it is extremely important to keep their cytoplasmic quality in pristine condition uh, to, in order to give rise to a healthy embryo. So how oocyte cope with protein aggregation during their long life is actually not known. But this is an extremely important topic because you probably all know that female fertility strongly decays with age, and this is largely due to reduced oocyte quality. And the, the causes of, uh, of this decay in oocyte quality with advanced maternal age are not fully understood, but nowadays, in, especially in developed countries, women are tending to have their, their, their children at higher and higher ages when statistically, so we are approaching uh, the point in which on average, women start to uh, experience problem in, in their fertility. So the, uh, the knowledge on oocyte quality will become a more and more uh, important um, research topic in the next years. So... To understand how oocyte uh, cope with protein aggregation, I first check it whether oocyte do, do indeed contain protein aggregates. And for this, I stained mouse oocytes, eggs, and embryos with protostat, a dye for aggregated proteins. And as you can see, even to our own f surprise in the beginning, we found that uh, mouse oocytes and eggs, and to a lesser extent embryos, contain this large protostat positive compartment, indicative that there are um, aggregated proteins in oocytes. This compartment tended to disappear in early embryo, indicate, suggesting that most probably they are degraded uh, during embryonic development. Normally in, uh, in cells, the protein quality control is highly taken care of. And when protein aggregate form, they are ubiquitinated and typically degraded via autophagy inside the lysosomal compartment. Consistent with this knowledge, we found that uh, protein aggregates in oocyte strongly co-localized with ubiquitin and with the lysosomal marker LAMP1. So uh, in oocytes, protein aggregate would be stored in uh, um, endolysosomal compartments. But now here is where things started to become interesting because LAMP1 is a transmembrane protein on the lysosomal membrane. And if this would be a single vacuole, a single vesicle, we would see a rim, a donut-shaped staining for LAMP1. But we see a filled uh, staining, indicating that these are probably uh, a collection of vesicles rather than a single vacuole. So we wanted to understand more how what is the ultrastructure of these compartments. And we performed electron tomography and found that these compartments consist of these clustered, uh, indeed, these clustered endolysosomal vesicles. Uh, we find in them by morphology all type of endosomal, autophagy, and lysosomal intermediates. We actually, this is a quick recap of the endo endocytosis and autophagy routes, if you're not familiar with them. And we, we confirm this data by immunostaining uh, with markers for all these vesicular intermediates, and we practically find all of them inside, uh, inside this compartment, co-localizing with LAMP1. 
so based on this specific composition, we call this compartment endolysosomal vesicular assemblies, or in short, ELVAs. And we like to call them super organelles because they are a collection of, membran of membranous organelles with uh, autonomous properties, as I will show you in a minute. We also find that ELVAs uh, host core proteasome particles. So uh, the oocyte packs together, all together, both the major degradation machineries, the proteasome and the lysosomes, all together inside ELVAs. Perhaps the most prominent feature that you can notice of ELVAs is the fact that ELVAs have very clear boundaries respect to the cytoplasm, but they lack a delimiting membrane suggesting that they may have liquid-like properties. And indeed, here you see in the video two ELVAs labeled in a live mouse oocyte, and uh, these two ELVAs are able to fuse with each other and relax into a single spherical object, which is a typical feature of liquid-like compartments. During oocyte maturation, when the oocyte resumes meiosis and prepares uh, to become a fertilizable egg, Elvas from an initially scattered position inside the cytoplasm migrate towards the, the cell cortex where they remain until uh, meiosis is completed. This process is active and completely dependent on actin since inhibition of the actin cytoskeleton with cytokalazin D leads to a complete blockade of alpha movement. At the same time, elvas activate protein degradation. Here you see an oocyte with ELVAs labeled in, in green and uh, loaded with lysotracker, which is a lysosomal acidity activity probe. So it will mark active lysosomes. And as you can see inside the cytoplasm of the oocyte, there is plenty of individual active lysosome, but the ELVA displays very little activity. However, as soon as the oocyte resumes meiosis, ELVAs accumulate a strong labeling with lysotracker indicating that um, they increase their, prote their proteolytic activity upon oocyte maturation. This was quantified here. The, the mean lysotracker intensity in ELVAs at the beginning and at the end uh, of maturation in the same oocyte, and there is an increase in, uh, in uh, maturing oocyte, but if the oocytes are kept in meiotic arrest, nothing happens, indicating that activation of ELVAs is coupled to uh, oocyte maturation. It is also coupled, I'm not showing it here, but is, is also coupled to uh, relocation because if we impair relocation, we also impair ELVA activation. So the two processes are coupled together. And consistent with activation of protein degradation inside ELVAs during oocyte maturation, we find that inhibition of lysosomal degradation with bafilomycin A1 leads to the retention of ubiquitinated proteins inside ELVAs, among which we find TDP43, which is a well-known aggregation-prone protein uh, whose mutations are uh, and aggregation are linked to neurodegenerative diseases um, inside um, in neurodegenerative diseases like um, ALS, for example. So we find TDP43 uh, degraded inside ELVAs in, inside the lysosome, indicating that this is a likely aggregated form of, T, of TDP43. So I've showed you so far that ELVAs are a novel superorganelle with, which, uh, with liquid-like property uh, that store and degrade uh, aggregated protein upon oocyte maturation. But what holds, what glues ELVAs together, and what is the advantage of having ELVAs respect to having a scattered vesicles, scattered organelles inside the cytoplasm? So to answer these questions, we first had to isolate ELVAs, so we took oocytes with uh, fluorescently labeled ELVAs, and we found that they are stable upon gentle mechanical lysis of the oocytes. So this allowed us to perform fluorescence-activated uh, par particle sorting and sort ELVAs and uh, submit them to uh, mass spectrometry to find uh, a list of ELVA-enriched proteins. Among the proteins enriched in the ELVA fraction, we uh, concentrated on RUFI1, because it's a coiled coil protein able to self-interact and binds to endolysosomal vesicles. So it would have all the properties that we need uh, for, for giving rise to ELVAs. RUFI1 uh, indeed lo strongly localizes to ELVA, but most importantly, when we deplete, acutely deplete RUFI1 from oocyte, 
uh, ELVA disappear and the number of free lysosomes in the oocyte increases. You can see it quantified it here, uh, indicating that ELVA resident lysosome disperse among, uh, upon ELVA, um, ELVA dissolution. So this was uh, actually a very excellent collaboration with the SHU lab in, uh, in the MPI Göttingen. Mm. Uh, not only lysosomes disperse upon uh, um, upon ELVA removal, but also they activate because if we stay in again with lysotracker, we find a higher number of individual lysosomes in RUFI1 depleted, in ELVA depleted oocytes respect to the control, indicating that a function of ELVAs is to keep the sequestered lysosome in a less active state respect to uh, free lysosomes. And finally, what happens to ELVAs after fertilization, after they have degraded protein aggregates, as I showed you, ELVAs dissolve um, in, during the first embryonic cleavage and, give, and leave only smaller vesicles behind. We find that actually this, this step is functionally coupled with an increased uh, uh, event of lysosomal exocytosis because we can detect uh, LAMP1 protein on the plasma membrane of embryos at the time of ELVA dissolution. We also know that these two processes are functionally coupled. So um, finally, uh, we ask it, what is the, uh, the necessity of degrading protein aggregates in, in the oocyte before embryo development in ELVAs? So to, to test this, we injected aggregating proteins in embryos when ELVAs dissolved, so, so that the embryos would not be able anymore to take care of them. So here we injected an aggregating mutant of TDP43, which is actually a typical ALS mutant. And indeed, we find that uh, this mutant of TDP43 forms aggregates in the embryo. These aggregates are also ubiquitinated. But most importantly, we find that embryos injected with the TDP43 mutant tend to develop much less uh, respect to the control. And the same result we find to exclude that uh, the effect that we see is due to TDP43 overexpression. We injected also a uh, synthetic protein designed to aggregate without interfering with, uh, with other signaling pathways in the cell. And this also strongly aggregates in embryos. It is also strongly ubiquitinated and most importantly also uh, strongly reduces the developmental capacity of embryos, indicating that having embryos in the early embryo, um, having aggregates in the early embryo is very bad for the embryonic development. And um, this is why uh, oocytes take a lot of care to degrade them in ELVAs before embryonic development. So I'm finished. I would just like to quickly recap with a scheme. I showed you that oocytes uh, contain, store aggregated proteins inside ELVAs, novel superorganelles, which harbor both the major degradative uh, machineries inside the cell, inside a liquid-like matrix. Upon oocyte maturation, ELVAs relocate to the cortex in an act-independent manner and uh, activate protein degradation, thereby clearing stored protein aggregates. And finally, in the embryo after fertilization, during the first embryonic cleavage, ELVAs dissolve coupled with lysosomal exocytosis. And it is extremely important that um, aggregates are degraded at this stage, otherwise embryos would fail to develop if they still retain aggregates. With this, I'm finished. I would like to thank, first of all, development uh, and the company of biologists for inviting me to give this talk, the, the Elvans lab, the lab Burke in the CRG, especially the people that actively collaborated with this project, our collaborator, Melina Shu and Shia, who performed the Trim Away experiments, uh, the EM facility in Dresden, who showed, uh, who did the EM tomography, and then other collaborators, facilities, and funding bodies. Thank you very much. Excellent talk. Uh, you have a couple of questions. So yes. the first question is, does um, roof, roof Y1 have the activity to bind RNAs? We don't know that. We never tested that. And not that I know that I am aware, but uh, we never explored this direction. Okay, the next question is great job. Did you find that ELVAS structures in another organism? I mean, have you found them in other organisms? No, we didn't, uh, we didn't look at that so far. Uh, we find ELVAS in oocytes because 
ROFI1 is very highly expressed in all sites in the mouse. We would really like to have a look in other organs, for example, brain, let's say. I guess uh, other, other or, organisms, like other uh, sites. Other sites from we, other didn't, we didn't actively look at that yet. We would right. have, we would like to do it. Right, and several of us, I think, have the same question. Catherine has it, I have it, and a couple of the attendees, which is, do you see a difference in young versus old uh, sites? Okay, so African? this is very preliminary. Um, we do see a, a tendency to hyperactivate of elvas. So we find that elvas are still there in the O site, in, in old O sites, uh, but we tend we find them more active even in the mature O site. So we are trying now to find out why. We think that this may be because the, the old oocyte has had more time to accumulate damage and then maybe perhaps it's hyperactivating elvas to compensate it, but we still have to explore that and what are the consequences of this. So you see them in young as well, you just see them more. Yes, sorry. Oh, yes, sorry, I forgot to mention this. This is done all in young in young oocyte, in mice aged eight weeks, about eight weeks. So it's oh. very young. So we find them also in old, and we find we find them already uh, already degradative, already acidified in in the old. So we still have to understand the functional uh, meaning of this, but there there seems to be some different regulation. Okay.